All right, so we are back at it again, bright and early, fresh day, and uh, we're going to be uh, picking up and locating all these holes on this adapter plate, so then we can then machine it onto that one right there. But the way I'm going to be doing that is first I'm going to be finding the center right here with the edge finder, and then after that, then I'm going to pick up each hole right here, and I have a digital readout right there that I can go plot out all the points. So then, I can then stick the center on this, and then go drill holes at the same points as over here. So, that will allow me to line up this set of holes onto our adapter plate right here. So as you can see, it's spinning all oblong. Oh, you gotta creep up on it. Right there, it's money. But now we're gonna clear this all out. All right, so now we got that number, 6.108, and we'll divide that by two, and then that will then be the center coming across right here to right here. So, then we'll land right inside right there. And then we also have to do right here. It's time to break out the wool hopter. Basically this is the next operation that I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bore out the center so that both of these are concentric so then when I flip it I can go pick, it, pick back up the same spot. So I centered it out with uh, one of these things and uh, yeah, so we're gonna try to bore this out. To do a tool change with this machine is kind of a pain. You have to uh, climb to the top of the machine. Well guys, this ended up being a failure. Uh, basically, I didn't have a boring bar that would fit inside the 
the big boring head so I ended up using this thing which is like a smaller boring head that's kind of a piece of junk and I lost the insert and I didn't even notice it it wasn't cutting for a while so I wrecked that thing but we're gonna try to do it all on the Toyota horizontal CNC machine instead here's the machine it's pretty sweet uh, it's pretty old it's uh, runs off a Fonuk 11 um, controller but uh, it's got a pal changer the pal rotates and uh, pretty sweet machine but here's my setup though it's not the best clamping I got one two three real clamps and then three more C clamps so I think it will do okay you really don't want to be using C clamps but whatever screw it and then we got it all programmed up to uh, bore out the inside of the circle with a uh, with an end mill then afterwards then I can go put in a drilling operation for the holes on this side maybe even a tapping operation we'll see and uh, so I'll let you guys know how it goes alright guys so uh, we used a uh, edge finder to uh, pick up uh, the hole right here and then uh, we're gonna put that in as our work card coordinates and we're gonna put the tool in and then we're gonna run it and see how it goes and here we have a dry run of the program this isn't making any contact uh, it's a little trick if you're boring out a big hole like this and uh, you're not sure exactly where the surfaces start you can uh, increase the uh, cutter radius inside your compensation or your tool offset and then uh, and then you then every single time you run the program you back it off a little bit so then you ease your way into the circle so that way then you don't just go hogging right into it so we're gonna run this a little bit and then we're gonna back it out some and hopefully start making some chips all right so we made the first pass with partial cleanup a couple spots so now we're gonna go over here and then we then switch to edit offset and then now if we reduce this number let's just say uh, zero point seven five five this should give us a hundred thousandths of a cut maybe that's too much we'll go five seven five that should give us a fifty thousandth cut because it's the radius so which I think that's how it works but yeah we update that and then now we can go back to memory program cycle start now it runs it once again taking off a little bit more I decided to turn on the coolant try to take a little bit deeper of a cut it's really a mess this coolant really needs to be changed I haven't gotten to it yet but yeah lots of oil in the coolant sprays out everywhere That's about it as you can see now it all floats back here and then there's this oil skimmer that picks up the oil off the top and then deposits it into the bucket. Obviously I gotta run it more because the whole thing's covered in oil, but... Well, there we got it guys. We got almost complete cleanup. A little bit right there didn't clean up, but that'll be okay though. Now we are going to do the hole pattern. So, I gotta basically take this, flip it, because it has to orientate this way. And uh, we're gonna run a, a spot drill and then a uh, tap drill. So. Alright guys, so here we have a simulation of the next operation. Speed it up a little bit for you guys, but... So... Basically if we play that again, it's going to come through spot drill. And then, then it's going to drill finally. If you look right here, it's kind of interesting. Because I've got pecking enabled, so it comes in, stops, comes in, stops, comes in, stops. guys well I try to put pecking on and it's, it does seem to be drilling in the correct spot and everything but it's like super super slow the feed rate is just so so slow but I think it's just an issue with the g-code so I think it is actually pecking it but yeah I'm not really sure 
This is one of the first times I'm running the machine by myself with my own code. So, Fusion's a little funky. But, yeah, I don't want to make you guys sit through this, so I'll update you once I'm done. Well, guys, I figured out why it was feeding so slow. It was because of uh, I put a F4 instead of F4.0. If you forget the .0, it reads it off as a 4,000th per minute instead of a 4 inches per minute, so keep that in mind. But, yeah, you can see the peck function works pretty good. So, exciting. I don't know why it put that hole right there. I must have messed up somewhere. Maybe it's a fusion. No, it's pretty late at night right now, so bear with me. It's about 4 a.m. All right, guys, so it's a brand new day, and uh, so we flipped the part over, and then I indicated it in, and then uh, we then uh, wrote a new program on here, all by hand, typing it. Lots of fun. So we're gonna run this for the first time, and uh, we're gonna see what happens here. Start rejected. Not sure why. Well guys, there we got it. It's about 2 in the morning, so I think I'm gonna head home, but we had a little bit of issues with the work cord and it's the first run through. I don't know what was going on, messing up my math, but uh, that looks pretty good. We just gotta tap this. I could tap it in the machine, but I don't have the right collar, so, so I think I'm just gonna tap it by hand or with a tapping arm. But yeah, that right there though, it's pretty much ready to put back into the yard crane. Sweet. All right, so we're gonna be tapping these holes on a drill press. We set the drill press as slow as possible, and then I have this slip, slip collar thing. Doesn't spin quite perfect. You can see a little wobble to it, but it works. So I'll show you guys on how I tap these. And there we have the finished adapter plate. Not the prettiest, but so there's multiple mistakes right there. G code was off. One of these holes, I think this one is off, but it's okay. You don't need all of them anyways. So just gotta do the flywheel now. And then we can put it all back together. 